I, uh, it was it touched my heart. I saw the uh, line group, our line group. Um, Jennifer posed some of the picture of our young people visiting. Uh, where's Jonathan? Jonathan, so Jonathan, your mom and dad also went, right? So, and Josephine, and Josephine too. I didn't see her. Oh, it, it was touch my heart. It's part of the vision of this church is two generations can come together, do something. Not the typical Asian people doing like violin and concerts. Those are great things. I did, I did a white <laughs> concert with Zachary yesterday. But something out of our comfort zone, amen? Something that really, really transcending who we are. Not defined by how we look, okay? Um, and it touched my heart. And I, I know God is making the diamond out of all of the family here, amen? amen. You can tell your, tell your neighbor, your family is a diamond family, come on. <laughs> God. Um, today I will share with a message that's uh, been in my heart. I would love to move to 2 Corinthians, but I can't. And I can't even finish 1 Corinthians because I get stuck in chapter 13. Tell me about chapter 13. Chapter 13. If you have to believe the myth like 13 to Friday, Friday the 13th is too bad. The Bible, 1 Corinthians 13, is the best book. Amen? Amen. So if you ever get scared, oh, today is Friday the 13th, have to think about 1 Corinthians 13, talk about love, amen? I'm just saying something to cure somebody's fear right now. Like every time, oh, it's a Friday the 13th, I don't want to go out. Come on, guys. <laughs> Read 1 Corinthians 13, verse 5. Wonderful verse, amen? amen? As a Christian, what's inside us is greater than what's in the world, Amen? I'm going to have fun today. Um, that's a message today. It's in this chapter called Love. 13. <laughs> Do you like it? 13 and 13. So there's nothing in the Christian life like we feel like, oh, this is a mystery. You know, oh, this is the day. Let's be careful. Oh, you know, July is a month for ghosts coming out. Come on, guys. <laughs> Every month is God's month. Amen? Right. Every day is God's day. Amen? Right. <laughs> you know why? Because Jesus said what's in us is greater than what? In the world. Isn't that great? When I was uh, in the military in Taiwan, one day we got through the training and then you know you know our, our surgeon drilled us like crazy. So we were all out of the floor and doing all this kind of thing. So while we are moving forward, oh my oh my uh, uh, how do you call them? Uh, our commerce. What? Comrades, they all kind of three like a, like, a, like a C split up, you know. And only me running through, oh, through. You know why? Because there's a graveyard in front of me. Everybody gets scared. I just run through. So I, you know, I got a shade, actually lying a, 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 along the tombstone. I have a shade under the 100 degree sun. What's inside us is what? Greater than what's in the world. Amen? There's nothing we should be afraid of. Are you with me on this one? We only have the fear of the Lord in our heart. The fear of the Lord will drive out all other fears. Are you with me on this one? That's right. If you walk into the you know, corporate office like, oh, I'm just a little, little lady, I'm just a little, little guy. You should walk in and if you meet the CEO in the, in the aisle, don't just talk to the other room, okay? <laughs> or just pretend I'm seeing him like some of our youth. Like. <laughs> if the CEO is coming, okay, so Paul, Paul look like CEO, okay? CEO is coming. <laughs> <laughs> it's the CEO, are you scared? CEO of the company, right? When you walk up, what do you do? Dark out of it? Or what do you do? As a young people, when you walk up, if what's inside you is greater than what's in the world, if Jesus in you is greater than he, what do you do? Yeah, what do you do? What do I do? Hi, hey, Mr. Polai. How are you? Nice to meet you. Oh, no. nice to meet you. See you all over there. 
Good. You know, you see that? That's what we do. What we have something inside greater than what's in the world. We do this kind of thing. Are you with me on this one? Thank you, Paul. Very good. Right. <laughs> now, this three remain. Call of Duty. <laughs> Legal Legend, no, I'm kidding. The, uh, the, this is a video game, guys. <laughs> and, 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 and Angry Bird, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. All the games will pass away, folks. There's no game can last for 100 years. You can try it. There's no technology can last more than 50 years. And I just read a story, and there's a guy working in the, in the, in the furnace house. How do you call this, like, really, um, how do you call this, like, in a funeral home where they just finally burned the, the body into ashes. They interviewed the worker in there. How do you call this person? Crematorium. crematorium. And, and this crematorium just say like, folks, I learned from my job that when I die, you can, you know, burn me into ashes, but don't put me into a place with a job. Throw me in the ocean, throw me in the sea, throw me in the mountain. You know why? He said, according to his experience, in 50 years, no matter what, what beautiful lot you got, nobody come to visit anymore. Mm. Think about it. So if you think that will be your legacy, think again. But now these three remain. There are three things that will not pass away. Are you excited to know who they are, what they are? Amen? Amen. The degree will fade away. Money will go away. Right. If you study, the richest family usually can last about three generations. The fourth generation, how do you call it? Squander it away. What do you call it? Squander, Squander it away. Watch carefully. Watch carefully. Money will not remain. But now, this dream remain. What is it? What are they? Faith, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of this is love. love. Tell your neighbor, faith, hope, and love. Faith, hope, and love. So I'm going to preach about this. I can't, I want to move on. I kind of struggle, but say, I'm going to preach on this one. I'm going to hopefully share with you what's in my heart today. And faith, hope, and love. I know there's a family named their three daughters, faith, hope, and love. But unfortunately, the number four coming. They are in trouble. <laughs> so, so, so sometimes don't apply Bible this way, okay? <laughs> you didn't know the number four is coming. Faith, hope, and love. And, and, and number four is what? <laughs> Hopefully a son. Hopefully a son. <laughs> Faith, hope, and love and son. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, so we don't apply Bible this way, but I love these three things. Um, so, so people sometimes criticize me like, oh, you're a pastor, you know, you shouldn't wear this kind of bracelet on. I never wear nothing on me. My status in terms of passion test is very low. But you know, this is what uh, Xiaowe gave to me when I first came to full-time ministry. He gave, she gave to me very, very cost-effective, like less than 30 bucks or something, or 50 bucks. But what's important is, it, 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 it's something here in grave, say, face, or, so every time I face challenges in the ministry, I look at here, it's a face, hope, and I choose love. I get it going. Now eagerly desire the greater gift, and yet I will show you the most excellent way. In this particular chapter 13, it, it's like a best sandwich. Which sandwich is the best? Subway? Hoagie? Yeah. Hoagie heaven. Okay, hoagie heaven. What, which which hoagie heaven sandwich is the best? Come on, guys. Let's vote it as a church. I, 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 you know how much I miss Wilson House, okay? You know how much I miss Princeton. I miss when I'm preaching, there's a sandwich smell coming like, hey, preacher, get down. We are going to eat, okay? Uh, what, 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 what's the best sandwich from? from, from, from what? what? Body bag. <laughs> 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 a cheese stick. A cheese stick. Australian. Okay, Australian. Okay. Uh, let's just make it simple. Cheese stick. 
Chapter 13 is a cheese and steak inside the two bombs. And, but you, have, you, you can't go without chapter 12 and chapter 14. If you study this, this chapter for love, it's sandwiched between two things. And, and those two chapters all talk about spiritual gift. Tell me about spiritual gift. Spiritual. So Paul was talking about how we should eagerly, it says, desire the greater gift. Yet, I will show you the most excellent way. And interesting enough, Paul spent two chapters, just like, you know, the outside of the sandwich, and inside, in the middle, the meat, the juice, the content is love. And another, and you see the 14, it says clear here, follow the way of love, the eagerly desired gift of the Holy Spirit. Another translation, of pers per pursue love, an earnest desired spiritual gift. So you can see chapter 12 and chapter 14 talk about spiritual and gift. Okay, So here in Agape House, there are two extremes in the church today. One is say we have to pursue the intellect, the degree, the knowledge, which is very important, the skill, the talent. And as an Asian community, I know we want to pursue college degree, advanced degree. You have all this knowledge and everything. Another extreme is say, well, those are not important. We pursue spiritual. But folks, the truth lies in between is we have to pursue both. Tell your neighbor, pursue both. Pursue both. So, Jonathan, come here. Come here. Come here. Tell us, you know, Jonathan is a very talented young man, yes? Yes. Yeah. All right. He pursues a lot of talent, right? Sort of. Do you, do you play piano? Used to, used to. Do you play violin? Yeah. Uh, do, do you like math? Do you go to competition? Did you win something? Yeah, and you gave, yeah, sometimes, okay. So this young man is pursuing a lot of gift, okay? Knowledge, pursuing knowledge too, right? You want to go to a good college, right? But the, in this church, in this Bible, we teach about something. This is a good pursuit, amen? But the Bible will show you the best way to pursue is pursue is love. What does that mean? Yesterday, Johnson went to this northern Philly. Give us a little bit of what what, what was experience there. Um, well, first we had to help with moving um, beds into moving beds into a dorm. Nothing to do with maths. Nothing to do with school. Okay, what else? Then we distributed uh, food. Distributed food to who? Uh, the kids. The kids. Were they looking, waiting for you guys? Oh, yeah. How do you feel? Feel good. Do you feel love? You see? If we combine the pursuit of love as the best part of pursuing of knowledge and skill and spiritual gift, that's the most excellent one to pursue. Give, give him a hand. Uh, ben, come here. No, I have to get the young people out because if I don't do this, they they they, they will fail out. They will fail out me. They will come. Come on, Ben. <laughs> do you love playing violin? Yeah. Yeah. Really? When when Ben play violin on Sunday, do you feel love coming out from that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anybody yeah. feel love? Yeah. Or you just feel kind of skill going? What is it? Or it's a concert? No. Mm -hmm. What do you feel on Sunday? Holy Spirit, what else? Anointing. Anointing. This is too spiritual. I want the real word. Like, right, like, right, what? Beauty. Beauty. What else? Do you feel this young man's passion inside? Yeah. Do you feel? He looks cool, right? <laughs> <laughs> but he, when he play violin, the notes come out. And you see, but, 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 you know, man, I think, I'm sorry, when you came into Agape House and play violin, Two, week, two years ago, I didn't feel that love. Nancy and Peter, do you agree with me? You got the skill. You got the intention, good intention. But two years ago when you came in, I listened to your play, there's no, I don't feel that love. I'm sorry, Nancy and Peter. It's something you like to do, good to do, and do it very well, but, but there's no that, how do I just call it that? Passion. There's not touch of love there. So what happened in the past two years? 
？有我吗？<笑>嘛，呃 ，play more，play more <笑>。Every Friday we get together, we eat, have fun, right? And we play for what? Forty-five minutes, an hour and a half, just worship. Remember that time? I think jo Justin was part of it. I, I see a couple of you. Now you start to know playing violin is not just a, a chore. Or a skill, or a gift, or a talent. Playing violin can be a lifelong fun. Do you agree with me? Yeah. If you don't play in the orchestra, you can play for God. Amen. You can play on your own to worship the Lord. Amen. Yeah. That's what's called the most excellent way. What is what? Desire with love. Okay. Give him a hand. Very good. <laughs> You are trained to be a doctor. You have to pursue that degree with what? Now today in the United States, because of insurance, every system, I don't feel love from doctors anymore. <laughs> <laughs> they can't love you because the insurance company do not agree. They love you too much. You are they are running high risk because you may sue them, right? I'm longing for a, a new system where doctor can show some love. Amen. Maybe I should run for the the state something. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Just for one thing, can we put the love back to our medical system? Amen. Mm -hmm. Why do you have to be that doctor like how you got taught today? Why can you be a medical doctor like nobody else? Is being right, is doing right now, but you do it for the Lord, amen. You pursue it with what? Jimmy, you're going to which college? You love it, right? I don't know what degree you're going to pursue. Pursue it with what? Which degree? Justice study. Pursue it with. Amen. If you're a statistician, I'm talking to Shawi. Pursue those numbers with love. <laughs> Inspired speech will be over someday. Praying in tongues will end. Understanding will reach its limit. We know only a portion of the truth. And what we say about God is always incomplete. That's in the Message Bible. But where there are prophecies, there will cease. Where there are tongues, there will be sty stifled. Still, Still, I'm sorry. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. And we talk about faith. Faith is important, isn't it? If you study here and we preach this in this church many times, Faith is about that you believe what God says, what God says, and, and you really put that into your heart. So this is about prophecies, about tongues, about knowledge. But if you look at 13, 11, it says, and when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. So the completeness is the key word I'm going to preach today. It's something called, should be translated into full grown or mature. Tell you never mature. So faith is great, but there's something completeness will come. When the completeness comes, all oh, everything is sort of a full grown mode. It's in a mature mode. So so uh, uh, completeness is so the mature. If you look at the Bible, use these words very very particular, particular like saying this is from going through necessary stage to reach the end goal. Develop into a com consummating completion by fulfilling the necessary process, spiritual journey. And you see, in this chapter, there's some a hidden jewel here. Is talk about maturity. Tell me about maturity. Maturity. Oh, my dear brothers and sisters, now in this season of my life, I long for maturities. 
I'm yearning to the Lord. I say, Lord, can I see the maturity in your church? Can I see the maturity in the grown men and grown women? Can I see the maturity in our young men and young women? Can I see the maturity in our media? Can we see the maturity in our government? Can we see the maturity in our science and technology? I'm, I'm looking, I'm praying, I'm expecting God to create that maturity here. Because everything will pass away. And when it says very, very clear here, the knowledge will pass away. But the one thing will come is a completeness, is a maturing process. Oh, I long for it. You know, somebody said my level of maturity changes depending on who I am with, right? Have you found that? A lot of you, you claim you are mature, I'm mature, but depending on who you are with, your maturity level change. Make sense? <laughs> so the first year of college, a lot of you come back and excuse, oh, mom, you know, that's my roommate's fault. You hear that? Oh, well, you don't know, mom. Uh, dad, I, everybody on my Facebook friend circle do this. Why can't I? Have you heard that? Oh, how much I'm yearning for the maturity. If you think love is just like fussy, warm feeling, that's part of it. But that's not all. Love is about maturity. Are you with me on this one? And, 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 <laughs> Sometimes I counsel many families, two generations. After the counseling session, tears in my heart. I say, Lord, I, <laughs> we need some of the parents to grow up too. Maturity is being home alone and doing. You can check your maturity level when you are alone. What are you doing? Alone. I say extremely alone. <laughs> what, what do you do when you are alone? If you list what you do, you are extremely, extremely alone. That means nobody watching you. You are not online. You are just alone. What are you doing? You are doing something that means that you have certain level of maturity. Or you are doing something you cannot reveal to other people what you are doing. Then you know you, your maturity level need help. We need love to mature us. Amen? I'm totally with this guy. <laughs> Maturity is you don't broadcast what? Your what? <laughs> Maybe I'm a very low social person. Maybe I am, but you have to, you have to forgive me. When I look at people express their everything on the internet, I, I, I pray for maturity, folks. There's an NBA uh, broadcaster, Bar Charles Barkley, right? He tried Twitter and he quit in three days or a week or something. He said like, those people who check Twitter, my Twitter account, Charles Barkley, 8 o'clock in the morning on Sunday, see what breakfast I'm eating. Those, those, those people do not have life. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <I'm, laughs> I long for maturity. This, 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 this word does not lack of love. There are plenty of love you can get around. But there's not sufficient mature love. Oh, I long for the maturity. Maturity starts when what? <laughs> Another psychological problem today, be very honest. It's a maturity problem. The drama continues. And we keep 
putting ourselves in a hole. And we never want to get out of it. Only when the drama ends, love starts. The mature love starts. Do you still live in the life of drama, fantasies? That you are like, oh, oh, how much I look for. How much I walk around and say, is there any mature love now? I can just observe and touch my soul. Showing sexual self-control is a sign of spiritual and what? Emotion, maturity. Oh, that's another. That's why First Corinthians talk about the sexual integrity as I just preached the past few weeks. How much I long for this in today's walk. Maybe I set up some rule in this church. Some people say, oh, Coach K, Pastor Conway is too strict. Why can't we purple? You know what purple means? Two colors make purple. What is it? Red and blue. And somebody say, how about blue and blue? You know, red and red. <laughs> how much I'm looking for the sexual integrity in the form of maturity. Oh, Pastor, can we pass the second base or first base? What time? Come on, end that drama with me. If you are mature, you won't even ask me that question. Oh, how much I long for that mature love. <laughs> When the completeness come, I know I may not even wait that to happen. And you know, the Bible didn't stop there. 13, verse 11, when I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a... Oh, how much... I'm looking for and searching for a mature man right now in this nation, right now in their family to stand up to be a mature man. Ladies in this church, if, if you want to marry a man, not a mature man, don't even come to me and ask my opinion. Amen? Amen. <laughs> because I can't make that man mature. Your first 10 year marriage will do. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I, I'm preaching out of my heart. Because I, I, it, it, so many of us like, find these excuses and you just feel like, oh. <laughs> now, this is another translation. If I offend you, I have to use this one. When I, when I was an infant at my mother's breast, I what? What, what is gurgle? Gurgle. Who can gurgle today? Huh? <laughs> and I talk some of the men and women as well. You know, sometimes you look at my face, I'm very patient, pa pa patient with you. But I feel what you're talking is gurgle, I'm sorry. It's it's <laughs> it's a drama. It, it's 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 now I'm trying to look down on you, but in my heart, in my spirit, I, I <laughs> I have a year and I say, God, can I, can I, can I see more maturity? I've seen parents look at their children. They are grown men, six feet tall. They are beautiful ladies. But the way they look at them is they are still seven or three years old. Are you with me on this one? No, if I was boom, and you know, this is three year old, I say, KK. Come here, let me feed you. It's okay. Oh, 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 you are falling down. Let me, let me hold you up. That's very good, right? KK is KK three? Three. Wonderful thing. But if KK is 30, <laughs> KK! Oh, 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 you are falling down. <laughs> I 
And young men come to me, oh, you don't know what I've been, I've been through. You don't know what I've been through. <laughs> My younger brother, now he's a, he's a business, successful businessman. When he was young, he had long hair, and, 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 and he loved music. So he, he got a band and playing music. He didn't want to study and all that. I don't want to go through the details. He's 12 years younger than I am. And he told me, bro, I don't like study. I just like music. I want to be a rock, rock and roll musician. I said, go ahead. So he dyed his hair. And he looks so much. He want to be really look like a Westerner. So he like single island like, like, like me. So one day, he didn't have money. So he went to Chinatown and asked for prices. So a couple of doctors can do like, I'll give you a double island. You know, look, look beautiful. So he went for the cheapest solution. He didn't have money. So he got to be double island, finally after the surgery, for one week. Because the doctor just get something temporary, get his eyelid up. <laughs> after one week, he dropped down. So after one week, he's single island with two red dots on the top of his eyelid. <laughs> Walking around. <laughs> I'm single island again, I'm a Chinese. You know? <laughs> and with two red dots here, like, okay. <laughs> Long hair, dye, brown, and every blonde and everything. <laughs> and he went through college for five years, couldn't graduate. He changed major for three times. He called me and bro, I want to change major. 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 The fifth year, I got him in a restaurant. I still remember that. And my my old my, my father who was very you know, really love my younger ones. And he said, Gong Li, are you sure going to say this to your brother? I said, yes, Dad. I'm going to say that to him. If you don't feel comfortable, let me do it. When I said to him, I said, bro, you finish your school this semester. If you don't, no money coming from us. And he looked at me. He's doing this you dare not. That means I and my father dare not stopping his funding. You know what I say? I say you can try. Try me. He finished next semester. <laughs> then he his fantasy drama is his, his music. Now, if you guys see my brother, he's 10 times better musician than I am. He taught everything, wonderful musician. Then he taught music after graduate as an applied math major. He went into computer science, by the way, Stony Brook. Is that the top Stony Brook computer science? Oh, our family said, yay! My younger brother now is really, really mature. Then the first year he called me and said, bro, I can't finish. I said, why? Everybody's better than me. So he said, can I transfer to music? I said, no. Then he transferred to applied math and all that. So the first year he taught music. He got 40 kids teaching at piano. Wonderful job. And then after the year, he called me and said, bro, I said, yes. I'm sick and tired of music. I said, why? I can't make enough money. I said, okay, what do you do? I found a job. You have to come and take a look. I said, okay, wonderful, what job? I said, well, you come and see, but you have to wear your boots. I said, what kind of job is to wear your boots? So I wear my boots. <laughs> <laughs> he took me to 12 recycle place, scrap yards. And walk in those scrap yards, pile of <laughs> garbages. But my younger brother said, bro, this one costs this much. This copper, the content of copper is this percent. You can make out, out money. I said, what? So I wear the boots and, 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 boots and walk around. And, and one, of, one of the square yard has a shooting range at the back. I'm not kidding. The owner just, hey, hey, how are you, E? How are you? Boom! You know, <laughs> shotgun. 
You, you will never be in that place. Have you been to that place in the United States? No. Hey, bro. Boom. You know, like, the shotgun. I was like, good stuff. <laughs> Gurgle, gurgling doesn't help. It's making excuses doesn't help. When I grew up, I left those infant weights for what? Which end you want to be? If you look at picture, which end? Which end? Every Christian like, ah, oh, I want to be this end. Guys, my father, boom. <laughs> <laughs> How much I long for the maturity from God's people and His children. <laughs> How much I long for people now start to take that father's heart or mother's heart and willing to stand on God's side in His heart and say, Father, let me feel your heart. Let me stand on your side and feel what you feel. And do you what you do. Age is what? Just a number, right? Maturity is what? And so many people come to me. Oh, you know, give me all kinds of things. I, I'll listen to you guys. I, I'm a patient guy, really. But sometimes, I just feel like if you made that choice, you don't have to say much. Own up to that mistake. Do something about it. Amen? Amen. If, if, if we, we say something, don't do it, and you did it, don't come back to me and say, oh, because, just say, coach, pastor, I'm sorry. Let me, let me correct this. I'm going to do it. Is that simple? That's called maturity. Amen? Mm -hmm. <laughs> maturity is not measured by what? Age. So a lot of grown men here, fathers, <coughs> men, I'm sorry, no matter how old we are, maturity is not measured by, you are 60, 80, but measured by what? Attitude. 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 If you go to a classroom, you always see at the back, very back of the classroom, that's one of the attitude. Are you with me on this one? There's an attitude already. You come on Sunday, there's some attitude you can put up for some. Feel by experience. And you will own up that experience as well. I'm going to go through. Maturity is not when we start speaking big things. It is when we start what? Understand what? The tiny detail. A lot of young people come to me, oh, I'm going to graduate from this school with a degree. Show me the details. Are you working on the details? No, this is a church. Don't hide things. If we got into trouble, let's talk. Amen? That's part of it. The tiny little details. Let's talk about it. Are you go to the classes? Are you be there on time? Are you hanging in the homework? Are you doing that? <laughs> oh, Coach K, preach like my mom now. Yes, I'm preaching out of my mother in love right now. <laughs> <laughs> now. Somebody say, devil is in the? Do you agree? You're high older people. So when, when the doctor operates on you, would you love to see the doctor to be more like, ha, ha, ha? I'm going to talk, this is a big surgery? You're a big guy? You know, I'm one of this way from Harvard, you know, medical. Hey, let's do it! <laughs> <laughs> Did you go for a doctor like that? No, I said, wait, but how many of these have you done? That's right. How many have you done? How many died? <laughs> <laughs> but, but when you see the, the doctor got that passion and the detail of the preparation, do you feel a sense of maturity and comfort? Yes? Yeah. How much I long for that maturity right now. How? <laughs> I, I just, and we have young people coming to God's 
church and I'm demanding this. Oh, this is not as good. I have young people coming. Oh, you know, coach, I've been in this church for seven years. Oh, my you know, middle school, high school. I love the church worship. I love the church is everything. But I said, young man, what did you do in that church? Oh, oh, I attended on Sunday. How, how much I... In the family too. And you know what I'm talking about. Right? Just, just young men and women, if they pick up their chores and do something. No, you don't know how much when I see Nathan, Molly, Josephine, and Jonathan as a family show up on Lions Group. It touched my heart. One of the sure signs of maturity is the ability to rise to the point of what? What does that mean? <clears throat> to honestly see what is wrong with me. Wow. 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 So what, what happened? To, you know, what, 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 what did our pastor eat this morning? <laughs> Soy milk, <laughs> egg, and bread. I long for the maturity. I'm not trying to go through self pity and self blaming or something. No, no. At a certain point, we have to sit down alone as a man and woman and say, What's wrong with me? What, 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 what's wrong with me? What, what, what's in me? That's, 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 that's why I'm making the decision over and over and over again. That's where the love comes in. That's where the agape love comes in. That's where God's love will never give up. Right? Will never let go. You know, I've been making so many mistakes in my life. I purple when my pastor told me not to purple. Are you please on this one in the college? I told you that. I had a girlfriend who was not shy away in college. I just say that right now. I purple when I shouldn't be purpling. I waste four years. I almost miss my real wife, the, the, the true wife. And, you know, that's why I say no purple. And, and <laughs> when I say no purple, it's in the church and when we get together. You know why? Because you can still have boy and girlfriend thing going. I understand. But when you come to God's house, we have to go beyond, as I preached last week, go beyond the Philadelphia love, brotherly love, go beyond the sexual part of it, right? Remember the arrows? Go beyond the family of the family love. We have to walk into the agape love. Amen? You come, you just stick up to me and you. You come here, you fight everybody. Just show that sacrificial love in the house of God. Amen? Hallelujah. How much I love for the maturity. I don't know why I preach this. So, Jennifer. The one, one area of, of, of maturing, I'm going to end here with Jennifer's help, is how you spend your money. <laughs> so do you want to see how Jennifer spent her money? Come on. Come. You should say amen. Come on, guys. Amen. So, you know, it's not easy to, 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 to disclose this, but she, 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 she's such a... You know, Jennifer, you bless my heart. You know, she came in really taking a step of faith to come to Agape out to serve. She never served in a youth group. And young people, do you like guys, do you guys like Jennifer? Yeah. Oh, come on, just bang. <laughs> come on, young people. Come on. And she come in with a lot of her own baggage. Can I say that? But she stepped out comfort zone. I think that's a process of becoming mature, amen? You know, I'm sorry, I put myself in your shoes, you know. If you come to Agape House, there's no same age man of God is church. So, if you're a young girl not married, your first thing is, oh, man, am I serving here? I never get married, you know. <laughs> <laughs> she stepped out of the comfort zone and said, I'm coming. So, um, so, another sign, another area of maturity I really long to see is we are responsible for our money. Which age should we start to be responsible for our own money? Come on, give me a number. Yeah. 
Uh, okay, 15. Okay, uh, Harry and Lisa, which age a man or a young woman should be responsible for his or her own budget or his money? 10. 10. Um, I forget. <laughs> we did it with 10 somewhere in the early teens. Early teens. Who say 10? Okay. If you ask Chinese parents, they say never. <laughs> I'll take care of that. What age should be responsible for our own budget and money? You know? When you were born. No, that, that sounds crazy. I, I can't prove to you in the Bible that managing our resource, time, and treasure, and talent is a part of what we, but you, you probably couldn't manage it, but you should. And I, when I have the ability, we should be taught how to manage. Amen? Amen. So we weren't giving a baby thing to eat. Not trying to, like, oh, give you, no. You, you, you have to let the baby learn about what? Making decisions. Are you with me on this one? Some of the moms say, oh, pastor, today is crazy. I always just feed my baby as much as I can. You know? <laughs> Stop it. That's my love. <laughs> so be careful. Be careful, hook up, guys. That may be the law, but not hook up the law. Amen? Because all you as a mom, your identity is built on food. And food only. Easily like that. So when I say this, I'm, I'm touching some nerves, I know. But how much I long for the maturity. Would you come, Jennifer? She's brave and share her budget. Go ahead. Do you have own budget every time I ask you this question? Okay, go ahead. Uh, so my, my saving is uh, negative two. <laughs> but, so technically, I'm not really like, you know. But, I mean... But obviously, like, coming here, um, I had to, uh, I, I'm on contract work, so, like, the way that works is I, I didn't actually know how that works, because I used to work at just, like, regular job getting a W-2, which was, I get taxes taking out every month, and I didn't know that contract work means, like, you have to save up a certain portion and then pay it off at the end of the year. And so when I first came the first month, I was like, all right, my salary, like, two, you know, whatever. And then, like, and then I would just think that was all, like, I could use, you know, for, like, that month. And then I started doing that, and I would save some, but at the same time, I thought this is exactly what I get is what I have. And so, and then like, and then after a while, I was like, okay, obviously like numbers weren't exactly working, matching and working out. And so, um, then I was like, okay, I need to probably start budgeting. And so I'm not perfect at it, but like I think what I did was just every month, whatever amount I get, because I don't get the same number every month. It depends on the hours of work that I work. So then like this, this isn't, this isn't what I actually earn out. I'm I put in like random numbers. Um, but, um, so then I started like putting in like, okay, what are the expenses that I have that are every month that comes out of my bank account, which is like, I, I go to the gym, that for me was important, health insurance, car insurance, phone, rent, things like that that were fixed. So then I would put those things in and some of these would come out of my bank directly. So then I already had that kind of set into my, into my budget. Uh, and then, and then I, I've always put, there's a, there's a section for tithing, so 10% is minimum. So then whatever that is, 10%, and if you have extra, you can give. If you have another ministry you're giving to or whatever, you can add on to that if you want. Uh, and then uh, there's always a rainy day fund. So like uh, whatever amount that is left over from what you're not spending always goes into that amount. Um, and I looked online, and I was going through Dave Ramsey. He's kind of, he's from, well, I don't know where he's from, but like he's a Christian uh, financial guy. And uh, I read through some of his tips, and he said that when you're doing a budgeting every month, um, always give all your dollars uh, a category. Like, don't leave anything blank. Uh, because everything should have a certain place where it goes. Um, you know, like, this is for uh, for restaurants. I want to eat at restaurants a few times this month, so I'll put this here. I'll put, this is extra, so this is savings, so I always put it into my savings account. So every number, so in the end, whatever you earn that month should always come out to zero, which means that everything has something in it. Uh, and then I have monthly taxes, so like it's fifteen percent for contracts, so then I take maybe that out of whatever I salary I earn. And then um, and then I have like expenses that are going to change, right? Like your groceries, uh, 
gas, depending if you drive further or closer this month. So then you have like, maybe you kind of estimate, like this is what I would need for this month. Mm -hmm. And then that's what I do, and I just put that in an entertainment, like if I want to go to the movies, if I want to go eat out with friends, then I put like a section there. Um, and then I read online, it says that, oh, and it says that if you're, uh, if you're married, then you should budget together so that you have accountability. You and your husband know, like, this is the amount we can spend together as a couple. This is, and they said that if you're single, just have, like, another person look at your budget, too, which, I mean, I don't have that, but that's what they say is good. Yeah, so then that's what I do, and then, um, and then it says, oh, and then what I do is every month, actually, I started doing, like, a few months ago, I started doing um, just cash. Because I, I used to like to use my credit card because I can get points, and then I can go traveling with the points. And so I was like, well, I'll just use my credit card because I have to buy groceries anyway. I'll just do that, and then I'll... But then you get used to using your credit card because then you have it with you all the time, and you just swipe it wherever you go. And if you want to buy something extra, like you can, you just you do that, and you don't think twice. But then what happened was I was overspending because I was using my credit card too much. And then what I did was, um, like a few months ago, I would take out like a certain amount of money. Like this is definitely like... Um, out of the fluctuating expenses, those that change, I would say like, this is what I want to spend per week for groceries. So then I'll like have like, you know, well, I mean, this is what I want to spend for the month for groceries, 400, which means that every week I can have about 100 for groceries. And then when I go to the grocery store, like I would have cash, I would never pay with card. And then um, I would just remember everything I buy and I look at the amount like $60. Okay, that means I have 40 more dollars this week that I can use on other groceries if I needed to. Or if I don't need any more groceries, I can probably take that 40 and put it towards something else if I wanted to do that, right? And so, uh, and then, and then there's like a, it's called the cash envelope system. I looked online. So you have like, if your gas is like $100, you gas is in an envelope. And then like groceries is one envelope, restaurants one envelope, you know, different things have each have a category and like an envelope and your cash goes inside of it. So then whenever you need to use it, you take it from there. So I think that makes you like psychologically, you're like, okay, I only have $10 left for the month. I'm not gonna do this anymore. This is all I have. I can't use my credit card. So all I have is what I have in my hand. So then you're more careful, like, okay, today can I spend or can I not spend? Um, you're just more conscious, I think, of, of that. Um, so that's what, that's what I was, yeah. And then, and then to give yourself grace, um, like, yeah, so like, what I do, <laughs> like the first one, first one month I had, I was trying to stick to $50 a week on groceries, which is like super ambitious, <laughs> which is like no, nothing. Um, but what I did, it actually kind of worked out. It kind of worked out, but I still went out to eat a little bit. It's like, I did, I looked online for meal prep, so like people will do like $50 meal preps and it's like healthy and it's cheap. And you can buy like bulk turkey breast and like vegetables or something. You can add, maybe buy some extra um, nuts if you want to put it in your cereal in the morning or to, just to keep it a little, at least healthy. Like cheap doesn't have to be expensive. I mean, healthy doesn't have to be expensive, right? Like it can be, like you can still find ways to add little things to it. So I did that and it actually did work out, but I really got tired of turkey breast. I mean turkey like brown meat. But I was eating that like every single meal, but... Um, but I think there's ways you can like mix and match, I think. And so that's, you go online and find recipes for that. Um, and then don't go to the grocery store hungry. You know, hungry. yeah. Yeah, because like if you're hungry, you're gonna wanna buy everything. And that's what I usually like do. I'm like, oh, I want that, I want that. And then you go home, you're like, I don't really, I'm full now. I'm not really that excited actually about all the things that I bought. I was just really hungry, yeah. So that's another one. And then gift card is really nice because I feel like I feel like I was really blessed by Coffee House people. Uh, a lot of the parents were so nice. Like during Christmas, people give me gift cards, and I think gift cards are like the most value. It's like it's like gold. And I think because like I work from home, and so when I get like Starbucks gift cards, like I can find, go to the coffee shop and I'll use the gift card, so I don't have to spend extra. It goes I can use from the gift cards to go there. And so I just try to use whatever coupons or you know discounts or whatever gift cards I have. So that was really helpful for me. And then I read online that if you if you are going to use card, you can get gas because you can't go over with gas. You you just fill it up and then you can't go past it. So if, if people do that to get points, like if you want to get your credit card points, only use it for things like gas, where it is a set amount um, every time. Not a set amount, but like you can't go past full, so you can't overspend. Um, but I did realize, one thing I realized about using cash was like, when you get gas with cash, it's cheaper. 
And so that kind of helps you save money as well instead of using your card, you know. So it just depends. Do you want to have points or do you want to, or do you want to just save some money like in, in pocket money? Um, but that's kind of what I've been doing. And so I just, I just use cash and it, it helps. And I, like you have three credit, like I have three credit cards. So like I leave at least two of them at home and I keep one just in case. Because I have one credit card where like, I have to use it five times a month or they charge me, right? I have to do transactions. So like if I get something small like $2, then I can use that card like for like things so that at least I don't get charged every month. But like you can leave the other ones at home, like have one for emergencies and then have two that are at home that you don't really use it unless you really, really need it. So that's just what I do. Well, All right, stay here. Thank you, Jennifer, just stay here. Is this talk very spiritual? Oh, don't want to answer, let me try that again. Is this talk very spiritual? Yes. yes. Let me try it again. It's, we talk about money all this. Is this spiritual? Yes. If you study the first Corinthians, super spiritual. Because it says very clearly, everything, soul, mind, body, your money, your time, in the, the context of first Corinthians, you know, well counted toward your eternity. Amen? Paul you something you sow today in your body, you're going to reap that in your future body. Are you, are you listening on this one? This is very spiritual talk, amen? amen? We have a lot of super spiritual worship leaders come out, oh, you know, and, and say, Pastor, I'm broke. And I was in one of the place, and, and you know, there are two young couple come out, just in their 20s, and say, we want to get married, and they, get, they stood up and say, give a testimony. We are going to get married, we are here, we are worshiping 24 hours, and somebody in the supermarket give me $20. Praise God. Don't give me this testimony in the church. If you are 20-something, go work for that $20. Amen? Oh, you are not hearing me. <laughs> Say here. You are 20-something, don't give me a testimony. Oh, I'm worshiping God. And somebody give me a twenty dollar in your mark. So, you know, if you're twenty something, earn that twenty dollars. Amen. Amen. <laughs> you know, Jennifer, thank you because by showing this, I, I don't know you don't have the budget like Jennifer, but if if you are faithful in what God gives to you, the small one, God will give you. You'll be in charge of much more. Amen? Mm -hmm. Do you believe that? Mm -hmm. you know, I don't know how God's going to bless you, but you got faithful in what God will be giving to you. You know, He's going to multiply that by His own way, not your own way. But you just stay and wait and just be passionate, be compassionate. And the rest of God, rest of God will be blessing you in all your life. It, it, it will be more than enough what you can spend. Amen? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right I'm going to end here. I don't know why, why I came to this. <laughs> Are you getting something out of today? Young yes. people? Anybody you won't go back and budget? Yeah, have you looked at the Geigos advertisement? You have two guys just going and just jump in the box, you can jump up and get head on the street and say, savings. Have you seen that one? No? <laughs> No, okay, that's okay. And the other extreme of this is like the parent generation. We save. We save. Their budgeting is saving, 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 saving. <laughs> that's another extreme. Like a Geico advertisement. Savings. But who do you save for? What do you save for? And, and the first Corinthians say very clear. There are three things remain. What? Faith, hope, and love. And, and you don't say, sometimes save it to a point, and, and I know somebody saved to a point, when you old enough that right, you couldn't travel, you have plenty of money, but your body cannot allow you to travel anymore. What's the use of that? I'm sorry, I, I'm touching everybody's nerve. Young people, oh, what's, what's coach doing? Uh, uh, parents say, wow, what's he eating today? <laughs> But now we see only a reflection as a mirror in the mirror, and then we shall see facts to face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. 
uh, I won't go through this. Uh, this is, a, it's, do you want to watch this? It, it's something I'm, we are seeing not clearly, but this man just saw her wife in 21 years, never saw his, uh, his uh, daughter. You look at it. We are waiting. 25, 21 years. First time ever seen his daughter after the surgery. Maturity is finally to understand. You see something. Husband and wife. I pray the maturity will come. That when you walk out of this place, you see your spouse. See, this man just said the first thing he saw his wife for, that he hadn't seen for 25 years. He, she, he said what? Where is my coffee? Did I say that? Did, did he say that? Where is my lunch? Where is my dinner? He said what? Wow! Husband, if you every morning you see your wife and say wow, you try that. Why okay. can't? If you see Vicky in the morning, say wow. I promise you, you will get food. You will get wonderful uh, dinner every day. Uh, Wife, if you wake up and see your husband and say, wow. All right, I'm going to finish up here. We're going to see how much I long for maturity. One of the true signs of maturity is ability to disagree with someone who I still remain respectful. I was the youngest one. Young people, you can disagree with your parents. I disagree, parent. but I respect both Okay, yeah. You disagree, but you show your respect. Can you do that two things together, yes? Young people, look at me right now, young man and woman. You can show your disagreement, but at the same time, what? Remaining what? Respectful. Very important. I'm going to play this one. And now, these three remain faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of this is love. When we sometimes don't know how to believe, we look at the situation, like my younger brother's situation, that year my heart broke. I didn't know what to do. I couldn't have enough faith. And my, my old father in Taiwan keep calling me and say, are you sure, is he going to commit suicide if you don't give him money and all that? I couldn't believe, I don't have faith. When, when you don't have hope because you couldn't see, I couldn't see my younger brother with his long hair, diet, and you know, all this single eyelid stuff, you know, going on, what's going on? I couldn't see when, who he can become. Folks, I have one thing I can do. You know what that is? I'm going to play this video clip. Mark Merrill, who was in uh, W, well, he was a football player, and do uh, wrestling, then he became a Christian, and God totally saved him from his drug addiction and everything. So he's now traveling and preaching the gospel. I only watched the video clip. And you know now three things remain, but the greatest of all three is one. No. And I pray when you go home, if you can have not faith, you don't know what to hope for. That's all right. But the greatest of those three is one. No. And it's not your love, my love. It's the agape love from God, unconditional sacrificial thing. And that's something I hope the maturity in love will come to this church. That's why I pray I'm going to play this one. My mom would be at all my sporting events. Let's say I was playing football, okay? My mother would be on the sidelines, and if the play on the field started going one way, my mother would run along and go, Mom, get off, get off! I'd be like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I get in the huddle with the other guys, they go, Mark, is that your mother? I go, no, I never saw her before. 
was the greatest gift my mother ever gave me. She believed in me. I overdosed on drugs on three occasions where I should have been dead. But I believe I was kept here for a reason. You show me your friends, I will show you your future. How do I know this? I hung out with losers and I became the biggest loser of them all because I gave up everything I dreamt about as a little boy because of who I chose to surround myself with. My friends would drive me home at 2, 3, 4 in the morning. We'd be drunk and high, laughing in the car. We'd pull up in front of my house in New York. they go, Mark, Mark, the light's on. I go, oh man, my mother's up. See, my mom wouldn't go to bed until she knew her son was still alive. I'd walk in, she'd say, hi Mark, how was your night? I go, it's good mom, it's gonna go to bed. She goes, can I, can I talk to you for a minute? I go, mom, I'm tired, I'm just gonna go to bed. She goes, Mark, I haven't seen you all day and all night. Can I please talk to you? I said, man, just leave me alone. You bug me. I slam my bedroom door. I'm the one person who believed in me. I was on a worldwide tour. We were wrestling overseas in Japan. After my wrestling match, I went upstairs in my hotel room and I fell asleep. There was a knock on my door at 3 o'clock in the morning. I got out of the bed. I looked through the safety window and I could see it was a Japanese promoter. So I opened the door and said, Mark, you need to call home. There's been an emergency. I went and got on the hotel room phone. I called back to the United States and said, hey, what's going on? He said, Mark, I don't know how to tell you this. I said, just tell me what happened. I was going to start crying. He go, Mark, I can't tell you. I said, just say it. He said, Mark, your mother died. I just threw the phone down. I ran out of my hotel room. I took the elevator to the lobby. When the doors opened up, I just ran out into the street. I mean, there was no cars. There was no people. It was 3 o'clock in the morning. And I walked down the middle of the street in Hiroshima, Japan. And I remember looking up and just saying, Mom, I am so sorry. I flew home for her funeral. And I was so nervous to walk up to her casket. So I just stood way in the back. And I kept looking from a distance. I kept thinking to myself, Mom, please wake up. Please get up. And then I finally got the nerve to walk up to her. And as I got closer, I could see my mom for the first time. I mean, she was so beautiful. She, she was dressed in white. I mean, she looked like an angel. And I just stood over and I said, Mom, you are my hero. Everything I am, everything I hope to be was because of you. You loved me so much. You gave me a life. You're the only one that ever believed in me. How did I repair? By getting drunk? By getting high? By getting stupid? By hanging out with losers? For oh, what? All she ever wanted to do was talk to me. I wish I could talk to you now, Mom. I wish you could see what I'm doing. Why couldn't I have been a better son? We are defined by our choices. But if you surround yourself with people involved in drugs and alcohol and pills, it's a dead end. I'm not here to preach to you. I'm here to tell you I lived that life. It leads to broken hearts, broken relationships, broken dreams, and death. For what? To get high? If you have a mother or a father, when you go home, tell them how much you love them. See, my whole life was about being rich and famous. I had to be a millionaire. I had to win the race. I had to win the race the expense of my marriage, my family, my friends. For what? To be all alone in the world? I learned what is truly important, and that is how precious this gift of life is and our families and how quickly it can be taken away. See, I no longer live in time. I live in moments. See, it's not what's in your pocket that matters. It's what's in your heart that truly matters. Love, love wow. is just a word wow. until somebody comes along That's right. and gives it meaning. That's right. You, That's right. you're the meaning. Can we stand up please? How much I long for the maturity in love. How I long for that we don't wait for this moment 
it's too late to be that mature person to be love. That's you. And you know the most important thing is we don't have that love in us except we come to the love himself. God is love. Through so Jesus, he showed that sacrificial love for you and me. So can we close our eyes? And I know, I hope the message touched your heart. And the only maturity we can have is to come and accept that love from Jesus. And as a, a second Corinthians say that in this vessel we have this precious, precious Jesus Christ in us that can shine through us. That make the diamond shine. If you don't have his light, you are just like a diamond. Can be carefully carved out and everything but no light. Only when you receive that light, that love. So you never receive Jesus Christ in your heart and he loved you so to a point he came to represent to you that love, that agape, or artif uh, uh, sacrificial, not artificial love. It's a real love that he come at you. So if that's you, you feel the message touch you, he want to touch you and just turn your life so you can start that eternity today with his love that will last forever, as I preached last week. If that's you, can you pray a prayer with me together? Dear Heavenly Father, pray with me, the whole church. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. Forgive me. Give me your love through Jesus Christ. Give me the everlasting love in me. Holy Spirit, whisper your life in me. Your eternity in me. So I can follow love in my life. Pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So I'm going to close here. And, and some of the prayers can come out. I really feel, if some of you, you feel you touched by the message,